So, big update here with the Baltimore Ravens and Justin Matabike. So, of course, as we know today, well, when you see in this video, it will be yesterday. The Baltimore Ravens officially placed the franchise tag on Justin Matabike. Their franchise tag is worth $22.1 million. And that goes all the way on a salary cap right here, right now, unless they end up working out a long-term deal. But uh, there were some things. Uh, when we first reported on the Baltimore Ravens placing a franchise tag on Justin Matabike, there were some more intricate details that ended up coming out afterwards. And they make a big difference in how the Baltimore Ravens and Justin Matabike can both move forward before we get into that make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video so you can stay updated with everything i love y'all and let's get into this news so you know with the franchise tag there are different types of franchise tags that can be used uh that can be placed on players when they're getting ready to hit free agency so they don't hit free agency and the type of tag that was used on justin matabike is the non-exclusive franchise tag now i know baltimore ravens fans are very familiar with the non-exclusive franchise tag because that's what got used on lamar jackson last year but we don't want to talk about that whole ugly scenario we're just glad that we made it past that and, and we can look at that and smile about it now because lamar jackson got his bread got his contract got his deal and that is a thing of the past anyway we're just a matter of gay they use the non-exclusive franchise tag on Justin Matabike. And what that means is a couple of things. It allows Justin Matabike to negotiate with other teams if he chooses to. So because, again, he's not exclusively tagged to the Ravens. It's a non-exclusive. So he can go communi communicate with other teams. He can go negotiate with other teams, talk to them about uh, a contract. And if... The a team decides to sign him to an offer sheet. So they try to sign him to a contract. The Ravens have two options. One, they can match it. They can match the offer. They can be like, all right, okay, that's a good offer. Thanks for doing the work for us, uh, but we'll take it from here. We will sign Justin Matabike to that same contract. Or if the Baltimore Ravens decide not to match the offer presented from the other team, then Justin Matabike will go to that said team, but the Baltimore Ravens would receive two first round draft picks and that is a heavy price to pay for meta bk um now the baltimore ravens but that that would mean both sides would kind of win kind of sort of ravens with two first round draft picks and eric DeCosta in the first round he's he's been money in the first round he done pretty much hit on his first round draft picks for sure so him having two of them would be a beautiful thing but you would lose justin meta bk but at the same time, you wouldn't have to pay all that money to Matter BK. But at the same time, you would be letting your best interior pass rusher go when it's been a struggle to find somebody who can be disruptive as an interior defensive lineman. It's been a struggle for the Baltimore Ravens with that for a long time. So, yeah, that's where it gets a little tricky. Now, with Eric Acosta and Justin Matter BK, this non exclusive franchise tag, it could be a very smart move because obviously the two sides are not close at all when it comes to the contract. Two sides are far apart. And, and we could determine that because the Baltimore Ravens, they placed a the franchise tag on Justin Matter BK about three hours before the deadline. And we know how Ravens, they love pushing deadlines, they love taking stuff all the way to the deadline and even past the deadline sometimes. Remember when they tried to draft but didn't draft jimmy smith remember that they, they, they turned in the pick too late they missed the deadline but, now, but anyway uh with the baltimore ravens uh they are far apart in talks with justin matabike now something that they could possibly and it would make sense that whether they're waiting on it or justin matabike he's waiting on it because it benefits him more than anything he may be waiting for a couple of big time pending free agents to get their bread then he can see what kind of bread he can get after that because remember the market is all about timing timing is everything christian wilkins from the miami dolphins uh he is getting ready to be a free agent uh, but then chris jones from the kansas city chiefs he is set to be a free agent now it has been said that the chiefs and chris jones they're working on a deal uh and there were rumors going around that they may have to pay him around like 25 to 27 mil per year we'll see what happens with that and with Christian Wilkins, a lot of people thought the Dolphins may franchise tag him, but they are letting him test the market. It's also been said that they're interested in possibly bringing him back, but they're going to let him test the market, see how that goes. So with Justin Matabike and Eric DaCosta and the Ravens, they 
are most likely going to have to wait on either one or both of those deals to get done. But now at the same time, Christian Wilkins, he could be waiting on Justin Matter BK and he could be waiting on Chris Jones. Chris Jones is the only one, in my opinion, who I do not think is waiting because he is the most established guy out of those two. He is the most uh, accomplished guy out. Excuse me, not out of those two, out of the three. So I don't think Chris Jones is waiting on anybody. He already got paid before, so he's just looking to get paid again. This will not be his second contract. I believe this will be his third. Um, but so he he already done got money, but he's getting ready to get a lot more money very, very soon. Most likely from the Chiefs, but we'll see where it ends up coming from. Uh, but so I think more so Justin Matabike and Christian Wilkins, those are the guys that are waiting. Now, um, a lot of people... Uh, I've seen a lot of Ravens fans ever since the franchise tag was officially uh, applied to Justin Matabike. I've seen a lot of Ravens fans having some interesting discourse and I get it um, because it is something that is worth talking about because a lot of Ravens fans have been like, huh, well, well Justin Matabike, should we really pay Justin Matabike because uh, his first three years, they were all right. But then he broke out this this last year. Should Ravens really give him the money? Is he really worth all that bread? And I get it because, yeah, you look at the first three years and they were nothing in comparison to this year. But something that's important to keep in mind, something that we've talked about literally all season or all last season with Justin Matabike. His first year, he was a rookie. Was he a starter? No. His second year, he was not a starter. His third year, he was not a starter. All three of those years, his first three years in the league, he was a part-time player. He was not a starter so his opportunities were minimal what happened his four, fourth year what happened with Calais Campbell Calais Campbell was cut they did not bring him back boom enter Justin Matabike he gets the most opportunity that he's got in throughout his entire career and guess what happens he got more opportunities he got more production and that more production is going to equal a lot more money is it a coincidence I think not I, I think not it only makes sense he was out there more he was out on the field more so he got more opportunities to produce and he did just that so he, he struck while it was hot now he's just trying to see if the Ravens if they're gonna strike a deal <laughs> wow <laughs> wow he's hot let's look at these numbers they were brought to us by Ryan Mink uh, in 2020 his rookie year he got one sack just a matter of not Ryan Mink but just a matter of got one sack and two QB hits then in 2021, the following year, he got two sacks and five QB hits. And then in 2022, the following year, he got five and a half sacks and nine QB hits. Then this past year, he got 13 sacks and 33 QB hits. So li literally every single year, he at least doubled his sack production now next year we, we cannot i don't think it's realistic to expect him to get 26 sacks I, I i don't think we should and i was talking to my guy yesterday my guy jason and he was saying it's a good point because if, if he does remain with the baltimore ravens just a matter bk that is then it is a possibility that his sack production could go down because he's going to be garnering more attention now now people know who justin matter bk is so he may not get all the sacks in the world like he got this year but we should still expect him to be a good player but um, that was uh, those are some good numbers from him when it comes to just the increased production again with the increased opportunity. Um, now, uh, I initially when they first placed the franchise tag on Justin Matabike, um, I thought that they had until May to get a deal done. Oh, no, they got a lot longer because the Ravens, they have until July 15th to work out a long-term contract extension with Justin Matabike. So now we're not even at March 15th. So they got March, April, May, June, July. They got a little over four months to come to a contract agreement with Justin Matabike. Something that uh, Ryan Mink also had highlighted. Um, I got to make sure I get the numbers right for this. I believe he said the Ravens have used the franchise tag nine times, and out of those nine times, they have come to – Contract agreements with seven of those players. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, yes, yes. He said they've now used the franchise tag on nine players. They've reached deals with seven of them. Um, the most recent I can uh, that I remember them not reaching a deal with is Matt Judon. Then he went off to New England, and he's been doing his thing over there for sure. Who was the other one? Oh, I, it's, it's not ringing a bell right now. 
So my apologies But y'all put in the comment section Whoever that person was That they didn't strike a deal with But um, They got time Bottom line is They got time Now uh, Again We're waiting Waiting on those other players Mainly Chris Jones Because Chris Jones He's going to be one, the one that Resets the market uh, For Justin Matabike For these interior Defensive linemen So he, he's going to be the one that just Breaks everything uh, and then Christian Wilkins, he'll be able to help out as well. But, again, it all depends on who goes first, who strikes the deal first. Um, and because the Ravens, well, yeah, they have no choice now since they don't have Justin Matter BK signed. They have no choice but to look around and wait and watch to see what happens uh, with those other guys. And we'll be doing the same exact thing. We'll be waiting, watching, and wondering what's going to happen uh, with those other guys players specifically chris jones and christian uh wilkins but it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun eric da costa he has a whole lot of work to do whole lot of work to do um because right now the ravens are over the cap they got some different ways that they could get under the cap but it's gonna be a, a, a lot more it's not just gonna be about getting under the cap but it's gonna be about getting under the cap and having enough money and enough salary cap space to also make some moves because you got some guys out there that are not going to come cheap. Whether it is free agents that you will be signing, whether it's pending free agents of your own that you may want to bring back. So Eric DaCosta got a lot of decisions to make. And this just, it brings me back again. And I know we hate re rehashing this and having to live it over again, but it is exactly what it is. This is why the Baltimore Ravens, they should have capitalized last year, but they didn't. They should have won it all last year, but they didn't. Because we, we knew all this stuff was coming. We knew all these big decisions were on the way. We knew the, the salary cap was going to be crazy. We knew this team was not going to be able to stay together with everybody. They're going to keep some core pieces, of course. They, they got some core guys, but a lot of people could possibly be leaving. A lot of people were trying to get paid. They're trying to get their money, and we get it. That's why last year should have been the year. should have been the year. Because you would have had to deal with all this stuff either way, but if you're dealing with all this stuff coming off a of Super Bowl, then it puts you in a much happier place.